The Vivo V17 Pro features two pop-up selfie cameras and four more at the back for a total of six cameras. Now, while it certainly takes the lead in the number of sensors it has, is it really competitive enough on other fronts too? It's time to find out in our review. Now, before we go ahead, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also that bell icon so you're the first to know whenever we have a new video. The new Vivo V17 Pro features an all too familiar design now, sporting a nearly all screen front with no notch and relatively slim bezels all around, including the chin. The earpiece on the V17 Pro is in the pop up selfie camera module, and sound is channeled through a cutout in the phone's front panel. The polycarbonate body feels sturdy, and the laminated back didn't seem to pick up many scuffs during our review period. It does attract a lot of fingerprints and smudges though. The edges of the back are curved slightly, so it's relatively comfortable to hold. Now on the front, we have a bright 6.44 inch Super AMOLED display with a Full HD Plus resolution and Corning Gorilla Glass 6 for protection. A screen guard also comes pre-applied. Color saturation is very good, text looks sharp and brightness is sufficient to use outdoors even under sunlight. The 20 to 9 aspect ratio of the display means that the phone is fairly tall and it's on the heavier side too, tipping the scales at just over 200 grams. There's an in-display fingerprint sensor which works well and you can customize the on-screen fingerprint icon and unlock animations. The Vivo V17 Pro has face recognition too, but this is only usable as a last resort in case fingerprint authentication fails three times. The pop-up mechanism is a little slower than other implementations we've seen. The volume and power buttons on the right have good feedback and there's an extra smart button on the left which can be configured to launch Google Assistant or Vivo's Jovi image search. On the bottom, we have a USB Type-C port, a tray for two nano SIM cards and a speaker. There isn't any micro SD card, so the internal storage cannot be expanded. Vivo has also managed to make space for a headphone jack on the top despite the wide cutout for the pop-up camera module. For software, the V17 Pro uses the heavily customized FunTouch OS 9.1, which is based on Android 9 Pie. Now, if you've never used a Vivo phone before, then FunTouch OS will take some getting used to. We ourselves still find it a little confusing to navigate Vivo's menus at times. The quick settings are all in a pullout menu which can be accessed with a swipe upwards from the bottom of the screen, which is the opposite of what you'd find on most Android phones. Also, there are loads of pre-installed apps, but you can uninstall all the third-party ones. Now, FunTouch OS might not be our favorite Android skin, but it did run very smoothly without any issues on the V17 Pro. Sadly, the phone uses the now slightly dated Snapdragon 675 SoC. It's still a relatively capable octa-core chip, no doubt, but it's quite underpowered for a phone at this price level. There's also only one configuration available with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of onboard storage. Now, the RAM and SoC are more than capable of handling your everyday apps and games. Multitasking is handled well and heavy games like PUBG Mobile ran smoothly even at the high preset. Now, after about 20 minutes of gameplay, we did notice that the back of the phone got quite hot, which seems to be a trait of this SoC, as we also noticed a similar heating issue in phones like the Redmi Note 7 Pro and even the Samsung Galaxy M40. In games that support voice chat, you can also use a real-time voice changer, which is pretty cool. The single speaker at the bottom gets fairly loud, even without any enhancements. Audio quality is not too bad either. The V70 Pro has a 4100mAh battery, which fared quite well in a HD video loop test, running for 16 hours and 47 minutes. With normal usage, we typically easily managed a day and a half of runtime. Now, fast charging is also supported, and the Vivo V70 Pro can go from 0 to about 74% in an hour. The highlight of this phone is, of course, the front camera, so let's start here. You get a 32 megapixel primary camera along with an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. The primary selfie camera itself has a pretty wide field of view, but the secondary one lets you get an even wider shot, though it adds a slight fisheye effect. In daylight, the V17 Pro managed to capture striking selfies. Details were good, textures were sharp, and colors really popped. The exposure wasn't always perfect, and at times we noticed some blown out highlights, but overall, we were quite pleased with the results. HDR was also handled very well. Now, the ultra wide camera captured slightly softer images, but that's expected. There's also a bokeh toggle, and portrait shots taken in this mode had good edge detection and background blur. The posture setting is interesting here as it suggests various poses for selfies for one or more people by showing you outlines of the pose for you to mimic. Now, if you take your selfie seriously, then you're in for a treat. 
Video quality with the primary front camera is also quite good but there's no stabilization. Low light photos were quite grainy but the fill light helps here. Thankfully you can enable night mode which makes a huge difference in brightening up shots taken under dim lighting. It also helps get rid of most of the noise and improves the exposure significantly. Coming to the rear cameras, we have a 48 megapixel primary one, a 13 megapixel camera with 2x optical zoom, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and finally a 2 megapixel depth sensor. In daylight, the main sensor captured pleasing details and colors. Objects at a distance had good definition, although shadow areas at the sides of the frame tended to have a bit of noise. Close-ups had punchy colors, good natural bokeh, and details were good. HDR also worked well and dynamic range was pretty pleasing. With the ultra-wide angle camera, colors can look a little boosted, but you do get a lot more in each frame. The telephoto camera is nice to have, but 2x zoom isn't much, and in low light, the camera simply uses a digital zoom through the main camera. The super macro mode worked pretty well for us and we were able to get some good looking shots. Low light stills were usually above average in quality. There was mild grain in the shadows but details were good and colors were well represented. The ultra wide angle camera isn't very useful in the dark since details are bleak and you cannot use night mode here. However, the primary camera with night mode had a big impact, making scenes look more dramatic and preserving details very well. You can record videos at up to 4K resolution but without any stabilization. Image quality was decent and the colors weren't exaggerated, which is a good thing. Stabilization does work well at 1080p. Now you can shoot 1080p videos with the wide angle camera too, but without any stabilization. Now at this resolution, you can choose either 30 or 60 FPS. However, video quality was very poor in low light. Also, the frame rate defaults to 25 FPS, making motion feel jerky. As a camera phone, the Vivo V17 Pro packs in some good hardware, but the software still needs a bit of polish. If you love taking selfies, the dual front cameras offer plenty of creative freedom. Low light video is one area which needs a lot of work as apart from the below average image quality, the drop in frame rate is also quite jarring. At nearly 30,000 rupees, Vivo should have done a lot more to make the V7 Pro a lot more competitive. At this price or even lower, we can find phones like the Oppo Reno 2Z and even the Redmi K20 Pro that offer faster processors and equally competent cameras. If you can stretch your budget just a little bit, then you can find the ASUS 6Z or even the OnePlus 7, which are also extremely good all-rounders. So thanks for watching our review of the Vivo V70 Pro. And for all things tech, log on to Gadgets360.com.